Okay, so what I have here is three different Kubernetes clusters that are deployed to three different cloud providers. On the top left here, I have an AKS cluster deployed to Azure. In the middle here, I have an EKS cluster deployed to Amazon. And in the bottom left here, I have a GKE cluster that is deployed to GCP. And what I've done is basically onboarded each of these Kubernetes clusters um, into Azure Arc, as you can see here. And then what I've done is gone ahead and deployed a data controller, as well as a SQL managed instance to each of these Kubernetes clusters. From there, on the top right, you can see, I basically have just set up distributed availability groups between each of these SQL managed instances. So that's what you're seeing here. So basically DAG1 that you can see between Azure and EKS has distributed availability groups being set up between the Azure SQL MI as the global primary and the EKS as the secondary. And then from there I have DAG2, which is this custom resource here, and DAG2 on the GKE cluster, which basically replicates asynchronously the transactions from our global primary on Azure over to our GCP cluster. And so now that all that's been set up, basically what you can see here in Azure Data Studio is I am connected to all three of my SQL managed instances. So this is Azure, this is Amazon, and this is GCP. And on the right here, what you can see is this is basically some Transact SQL that I'm running to show the health of each of the distributed availability groups. So this is all managed by the data controller. And as you can see here, basically these are asynchronously set up um, at this point in time, and the seeding is automatic. And so what that means is when I create a new database, as we're going to do now, on the global primary and start doing some transactions on a new table that we create, those transactions will be asynchronously committed onto the new database that is created in AWS and in GCP. So let's go ahead and do that. And so I'm going to do a refresh here so you can see that on my Azure primary instance, I don't have a database two, which we're going to create right now. And same thing on Amazon as well as uh, GKE as well. So I'm going to create the new database on our global primary here. So I'm creating the database. Once it returns a success, we'll be able to see that database get created on our global primary, which is right now sitting in Azure. So if I do a refresh, we see that database just got created. Uh, there are no tables in it because we haven't created any. And here's where the distributed availability groups kicks in. We see those same databases automatically get seeded to our Amazon EKS cluster. And now over to our GK cluster, which was created from this second data center automatically. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a table on my global primary, uh, which is currently sitting in Azure. So you can imagine this is a user table that just got created. And this is automatically going to be seeded to our uh, secondary, and in this case, our tertiary data center, which is GCP. And if I go ahead and just insert some transactions, actually, let me go ahead and do a select to show you that there's no data in this table and no data in the secondary data center or our tertiary data center in this case. And when I go ahead and do some insertions into our global primary and I do a select star, we see that those data points are now available in our global primary. And almost instantaneously in an asynchronous manner over the uh, VPN network, we see that those transactions are now available on our second data center, which is actually sitting on AWS. And in our third data center, in this case, uh, which is sitting on GCP. Thank you.